Hey, how's it going? This is Roy from RateMyFuneral.com. That was Rate, by the way. So today's the little thing we're going to do um, is basically I was sent uh, an image by an art, well, not by the artist, but by somebody who'd found this image. Um, and let me just bring that image up for you right now so you can see what it is. Uh, it was basically this. And um, I was asked if I would be able to reproduce this in cinema. You know, how, you know, how easy would it be? It's, yeah, it's not too bad at all. It's actually pretty straightforward. Um, but there's a couple of nice little things in there that I thought might be quite useful to uh, do something on. So that's what I thought we'd do. The original artist um, is called Paul Kaczynski. I believe that's how you pronounce it, so I'm hoping that's right. Um, and he's fantastic. If you go, he's got a website, you can go and see other works of his. It's kind of all sort of really cool, gritty, uh, challenging convention kind of art stuff. Really, really cool. Um, but I do really like this shot, uh, this, this uh, piece. Um, so I thought, yeah, this would be a really fun thing to do. So uh, let's hop on in uh, to cinema and uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll give it a go. Um, so, welcome. We're in Cinema 4D. We're going to do some stuff. I'm just waffling now. Let me not do that. Right, okay. Uh, quick note to anybody that is worried about the humming noise. I apologize for this. This is my PC. It's got too many really big fans in it. So therefore, it's making loads of humming. Um, I will get some quiet fans in there at some point and that will hopefully reduce that. But that is the trade-off with having good quality audio, is it picks up absolutely everything. <laughs> right, so, <clears throat> anyway, uh, where were we? We were going to make this in cinema. So, yes, nothing incredibly complicated, nothing super, super clever, so I hope you're not expecting anything. Um, there's no magic, crazy espresso that makes the door automatically be a door. We just make it. Um, I'm waffling again. Let's not. Let's build our cell wall. That's where we're going to start, right? There's a couple of ways you can do this. You can make a cube and then ball out the holes, or you can do it with splines, um, or you can actually just model it um, and then do it properly. Um, but we haven't got time, so we're not going to go the balls route because of the fact that I want to have beveled edges, um, and the ball will make a solid cut. Um, we're going to go the spline route because then I can at least have some slightly beveled edges. All of this will make sense in a minute if you don't know what I'm already talking about. So first thing is let's hop into front mode. In case you missed that, I just created a rectangular spline. Okay, so there's our wall. That's pretty straightforward and simple. I'm going to create a copy of that rectangle by holding control and clicking and dragging. And we're going to make this our door. So our door is going to be about so wide and probably about so tall. Uh, let's maybe make it just a touch taller, something like that. That's fine. It doesn't need to go all the way to the ground because we don't see the ground in the image. Um, and I also I want to create another rectangle which is going to be our um, window at the top with the bars in it. So we just shrink that down, something like that, and put that there. Okay, so hopefully all our scaling is about right here. It's kind of difficult to tell. Um, maybe I'll make the door slightly wider than the window, just to make it interesting. There we go. Okay. So that's going to be our prism wall. And basically, we're going to extrude this out. So let's first of all, with the top main rectangle, so we'll call this one main wall, and then we'll call this door cut, and then this one we can call window cut. So if we name everything, we, it's a lot easier a bit further down the line. So main wall is selected. We click and hold Alt uh, while we click on Extrude, and therefore that extrudes it uh, to the tune of 20 centimeters, which we'll do for now. Um, now, obviously, we want to cut these out. So what we do is grab our main wall, and we put that into a Connect object. So again, we hold Alt, select Connect, and bang. Our main wall is in a Connect, so we can now add the door cut. That cuts the door out and the window cut. There we go. Now this is what I was saying earlier. If we used a standard ball and just put squares in there, we wouldn't be able to do this bit, which is we go to the extrude, which we're going to call main wall. We go to caps and we turn on fillet cap. Fillet. And you can see that adds 
our bevel there. Let's just go to display here and turn on our grad shading with lines. Um, and let's pull that in about there and we'll click constrain to keep it the same size that we wanted it in the first place. And there we go. So now we've got a, a bit of an edge. Um, I might add one more step onto those. There we go. Just, just perfect. Right. Okay. Great. So now we've got that bit done. Uh, while we're here, we might as well do the bars. So we'll grab a cylinder and we will move this up. If we look here in this uh, right hand view, it's not quite central. So we can just move that over a little bit and then that saves us worrying about that in a little while. Uh, we can just grab that little dot there and pull that right in. Um, the cylinder, it's got lots and lots of geometry in it. We don't need that because we're going to be kind of back here somewhere. And basically, when your geometry looks all black like that, that means it's being wasted. Unless you're getting right up close to it, it does not need to have that much. So you're just using up, um, you know, power. Power! So we'll just pull that right back to about 15 or so, which I'm sure is fine. Yeah, that'll be all right. And we'll just move that across. Now we want to create four of these. So with the cylinder selected, we'll go to MoGraph, Cloner, hold down Alt again like we always do. Well, not always, but we have been. That creates our cylinder into a cloner. And um, by default, it puts it into the Y. So those bars are going upwards. We don't want to do that. So we'll just zero that one out and we'll come across on the X. We'll also make it so it's four and, uh, and then get them pretty much even. Something like that. There we go. Fine. Um, I might make the cylinders a little bit thinner as well. There we go. Cool. Okay, so there's our bars done. So let's name those bars. By the way, I am not hanging about in this tutorial. Um, I will explain everything to the best of my abilities at the speed we're going. But if you uh, miss anything, just uh, pause and give it a rewind. Rewind. Yeah, like we still do that. Um, I'm sure I'm sure the sound of my voice won't get annoying after a while. <coughs> right, so I'm just making that main wall a little bit bigger because I wanted a bit more height on the ceiling there. Okay, so now we need a door. As we've got a, um, a spline here that's the exact same size as the door, we'll just make a copy of that, hold control, click and drag it out, and we'll label that door. Um, we go to extrude, hold down alt, bang, there we go, there's our door. Caps, fill it cap, fill it cap, um, maybe make it two centimeters with two on each and constrain it. There we go. So now our door is sitting nicely in there and it's got a nice little bevel so it, you know, so it's uh, it's not perfectly flush and no, there's no sharp edges except obviously these corners, but that's fine. We could, you know, if we really, really wanted to be, uh, uh, you know, detailed, we could actually, if we turn off that main wall there a second and just hide that door so we can see what we're doing. This door cut spline, we could actually turn on rounding and maybe make that something like two and do the same here, maybe make that one three on the door. And then what that will do is that just makes it so it's not 100% square. Um, we could do the same actually on the window cut as well. So we'll make that sort of two there, mm, maybe one, because that would be relatively square, but that just takes a little bit of the edge off. Okay, so um, it's a good idea at this point to come into the render settings and turn on ambient occlusion because that then just basically puts shadows where it thinks a shadow should be um, if an object is right next to one another and it helps you see these kind of edges and lines a little bit better. Cool, okay, so we know where we're at. We've made our door, we've made our bars. Uh, the next thing we want to do is the little nobbles on the door. Nice little easy way of doing this. Let's create a an, an oil tank. Um, we'll put that into the Z plus orientation. And obviously this is massive. We don't need it anywhere near as big as that, so we can shrink this right down by grabbing all of these little things, or we can we can change the the settings down here. This is one of those ones that it's quite difficult to tell, um, you know, your uh, settings until after you've kind of set the rest of it up. So let's just have a little guess here. So I'm going to make that something like that there. It doesn't matter that the back end of it's in the door. It's fine. We won't see it. It's out of the way. Um, we certainly don't need as much geometry as this though, so we can put our cap sections right down and our height sections certainly right down. 
Um, even the rotation sections, um, probably something like 14. I'm sure that will be fine. Yeah, because we're going to have lots of these, so we don't want this too, too much. Maybe we'll make it 16 just to be sure. Right, okay. So we've made our, our little knobble, uh, which is going to be our door bolts. Um, and we need to make a copy. Let's have the door. And we're going to call this one, this is our um, bolts guide, we'll call it. Okay. And that's all my phones going off at the same time. So, uh, bolts guide. Let's go into our bolts guide and just pull that forward a minute so we can see what we're doing with it. <clears throat> What we need to do is tell it uh, that it is editable. Press C, there we go, it's now editable, which means we can go to point mode and we can see the points on it. Now we've got to bear in mind that because we made this rounded, uh, it's got extra points. So I'm going to un just undo that and turn off the rounding on this one. Cool, now I'm going to press C again, there we go. Right, now what we want to do is turn off closed spline. Problem is, it's left that side. So that's not the right one. So if we turn that back on and we make this spline, right click, set first point, and you can see it gets it's whiter and it starts to get bluer as it goes around the spline. So that means that this is the first point and that's the direction it's going in. So now when I close the spline, it gets rid of the bottom. Perfect, that's just what I wanted. Uh, the next bit I'm going to do is just go into the outside view and let's grab, with point mode still selected, we'll just grab all of the points Press T for the for the size, and we'll just pull that in a bit. There we go. Right. Um, I will just grab these two and just move those in a little bit, and grab these two and just move those in a little bit. There we go. And this is basically going to be our holder for our bolts. So our bolts that we've got here, with them selected, we go into MoGraph Cloner, and we go to the cloner and go object mode and we put our bolts guide into the object mode there we go and what that's now done is it's put bolts around the door simple so we want to change a few little bits and pieces here so let's just move this down here and we'll call this we'll call it door bolts okay so the uh, distribution we want that to be even um, the one thing we've got you might notice here is one is missing from the bottom and that's because loop is selected so if we turn that off that then puts them out like that and then we just got to add as many as we kind of want now I like lots of these I think it looks cool with lots um, I'm thinking that they are a little bit big but ah, mind you they have changed orientation so they're now on their sides so we need to go into the cloner and then go transform and just put 90 degrees on the P, there we go. Right, that's great. Now with our, um, what am I doing? Sorry, getting a bit confused there. Oh, I've messed that up. Ah, what have I done? Okay, interesting, I've got it back. Weird, I don't know what that was all about. Right, so ignore all of that bit. What we want to do is grab our bolts guide, go back into object mode and just pull that back until the bolts are just poking out of the door. There we go. Um, I am thinking that they might be a bit big. I might make them smaller and more, more of them. So we just grab the oil tank, go to T and just shrink them down a little bit. There we go. Um, and go to the guide and just Pull that in, maybe you there. Okay. Door bolts object. Let's add more. It's kind of difficult to tell. Add to taste. There we go. That'll do. Right. Plenty of bolts. Okay. Next, um, we'll just put in the uh, the bits for the side here. So we go to a cylinder, and let's make that about the right position. We'll shrink the height down quite a lot maybe 50 pull the radius right in let's just get in here and have a look um, something like that that's fine we don't need too much detail because this is just off the back we'll turn on the fillet though 
make it radius one, maybe two sections. Uh, let's go radius two. Let's be dangerous. Um, right, okay, so now we've got that. We'll put that into a cloner. And that's pretty much what I was hoping for. So that's done its job, that's great. Next we'll get that cloner and we'll put that into a cloner as well. But we'll send it downwards this time. And there we go, right, so that's made our hinges going all the way down the sides. Great, okay. So, if we just uh, have a look there, we've got this going on now. I think those hinges are a bit big actually, thinking about it. So radius, maybe make them six um, and 40, which means we go into this cloner and put that down to 40 as well so that they sit neatly. There we go. Okay, brilliant. Right, the next bit is going to be the Facebook logo. So we need to make an F. It doesn't really matter about your font because we're going to build it manually anyway. So cool, there we go. Uh, the only thing you might want to do is make it bold just to save a bit of effort. Okay. So we've got our text. Let's just turn everything else off. What was these? So these are the hinges. That's the door. I've written doors. I've written it again, there we go. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll grab this door and we'll put it. press Alt-G to put that into a null. And we'll add in there the bolts because they're attached to the door, the bolts guide, not the bar, the hinges. There we go, so that's all of the door. Awesome. Right, we'll turn that off now. And let's turn off the back wall just for now so that we can see what we're doing. There we go. Right, so our F, we need to do a bit of work on. So we're going to make it editable by pressing C, go to object uh, point mode, um, and let's see what we need to do here. So these two we can pull in a little bit. We need to get some on the opposite side. So if we press K, that gives us the knife tool. So we want to click on the line and then hold shift and that will make a dead straight line. That puts a cut in there. Same again. There we go. And that, we just now need to add another two. Grab those two. And we'll just eyeball it for now. There we go, that's fine. Um, and then let's get these straight. Okay. Oops. Uh, and there we go. Right. Cool. Okay. Like I say, I'm not sure. We'll fine tune all of that in a bit. Okay. Uh, the Facebook logo is curved on these two parts here. So we just grab this top one, right click, and do chamfer. And then we click and hold and drag until it's about right. Um, it's great. Space to go back to the other pointer mode. Um, do the same again on the inside. About there. Again, you have to eyeball it for now. Great. Okay, so there's our F made. The It's going to be a bit taller than this, so let's drag that down. There go my phones again. Right, okay. Should really mute them. I'm not sure why I didn't today. Okay, so there's our F. Um, let's just get our cursor in the middle, our access point. So we click on this one to change the access, axis, uh, and I'm just going to put that in the middle. There we go. Turn that off again and add that to an extrude. Boom. There we go. Okay, so that's our F. Let's make it 30. Um, and as always, we go to the caps, put on the fillet caps, maybe just make them one, one, three, three, and that should give us a little sharp, but still enough to be reflective edge. Cool, okay, um, what is next? We need to turn everything back on and see what's happening. So we grab our F, pull that out. It might be a bit small actually, so let's press T and we'll just scale that up, something like that. Press R for rotate and turn it around. Okay, it's not quite straight, so we will move it so that the top is poking through there. Let's make it a mm, let's make it a bit bigger. No, make it a bit smaller. Right, we've got some issues here we need to resolve. So 
on our main wall. Now let's just uh, let's just have a look here. How tall is that gap? If we look at the original picture, so that's quite a bit of a gap. Um, so let's get our window cut. We'll move that up a bit. I'm also going to oh, not bring it in. Bring it down a little bit. Something like that. And then our F going to position just up there. And I want that just off the wall so it creates a nice shadow on there. Okay, cool. All right. Um, if we're worried that those are sitting a bit high, we can go back into point mode, grab the text. Uh, we'll just grab all of these, click and drag, and then just move them up slightly. There we go. Okay. Uh, grab the bottom two and pull those down. Again, we're not sure where it's going to be yet, but somewhere around there. Okay, so now we have our F in place. <laughs> um, we've got a few details to do for the for it, so we'll call that F. Um, and we will create a cylinder, which is going to be the handle. Um, let's put it on the Y, no, the X, there we go. And that needs to go inside our F, like that. Um, shrink that down. About 20 segments, we certainly don't need 36. Okay, and cap fill it. Something like that. There we go. Okay. So that's going to be our handle. Next, we need to make a periscope. Um, not periscope, a viewer, viewer. So we will use a similar thing that we did earlier. We'll make a rectangle. Let's just turn everything else off for the moment, except the F. Right. Let's move this to the front and shrink it right down. Cool. Okay, let's get that centered. Okay, and oh, the width is fine, it's the height needs to come down a bit. Okay, we'll make a copy of that and just pull that in. Right, same as earlier, with one of those rectangles, we'll select connect and we'll put that in there. Okay, now that connect, we're going to put inside a loft object and then make a copy of it and move it forward. So that's created our kind of viewer, um, but I want a bit of an angle on it. So I'm just going to angle that like that slightly. And just to, so it doesn't have any problems with height. Uh, I'm just going to make it so it goes up just a little bit. There we go. Fine. And we'll say it's all this viewer. That's, that's how I spell viewer. It's a special Rory way of spelling it. Um, and we just plop that inside our periscope like that. Uh, next, a plane. I held out there to make the plane in the same kind of area as the viewer. Let's rotate it. So, and, ooh, what's going on? There we go. 90 degrees and shrink it right down. Pull that forward. That's certainly got too many segments, so we'll just make that one and one and just make that so it fits. Great. Fan dabby dozy, right, okay. I will call that glass, whatever. Um, right, okay, so that is our cell and F logo set up. Cool, next thing we need to do is open the door. So the door Here's a problem. If we just try and rotate that, that's going to pivot from the middle. That we don't want. So we will go to access mode and grab this. And basically, let's see where it's going to be best to do this. We pull this over to the center of those hinges. Um, and it's already on the front side, so that's fine. So it can now come out of access mode. Now when we rotate it, we can have it like that. There we go. So now we're going to have our glimpse of the outside world through our slightly open door. Brilliant. Now, outside, 
um, we want a bit of a mount, a bit of a hill. So I just created a landscape object, T, and just scaled it right up. Um, move it down and then just put it outside the door. And there we go. That gives us our hilly grass. Cool. Um, for our sky, um, I literally used a sky object um, with a texture on it. So we'll uh, we'll sort that out in a moment. Uh, the next thing I suppose we're going to want to do is have a little dude stand in there. So in my example, I used a figure because that's obviously the uh, the mascot for Cinema 4D. Um, we will have to do a bit of tweaking here, but I'm thinking that he's going to be about there. Now, in order to position him, we have to make him editable. So I think he's about the right size. Maybe I'll shrink him just a touch. Um, I might actually move that viewer and glass down a bit. There we go. And I'll get him to sort of lean into it. So we make him editable. And then we grab his, say, top half. And rotate that in. Uh, obviously, he's coming away from his back there. So we'll just uh, reposition him a bit. Um, if we grab that, we'll bend that forward slightly as well. And we've got to fix up his legs a little bit here. We don't want them completely where they, they start off, otherwise he's standing a little bit unnaturally. Um, and let's just move his head back slightly. Right, we're going to need to move him in his entirety down so that he is looking through the glass. Cool. And then we'll grab his arms. So let's just zoom in, grab his arm there. Um, let's turn that down and in a bit. Let's grab that one and bend that up. We've got to sort of find what would be about the right kind of position for this. Okay. It's looking pretty close. Cool. Oops, grab the hand. Okay, so he's holding on to that one. Next is this one. Oops. Beautiful, right. Okay, so that's his two hands on it. So there we go, he's now he's now looking through that. I'm quite satisfied with that. Uh, the only thing is maybe I'll bring this arm in a little bit because it's kind of out. Ah, I'll certainly try anyway. So something like that, and then just pull that back up again. There we go. Okay, cool. All right, so we've got our guy, he's looking out there, that's fine. Uh, final last thing we need to do is just create some walls um, to sort of make this prison seem a little bit more logical. So we'll just create some cubes, move them around. Bom, 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 bom. See, that's taken slightly longer than I was hoping for, but if you're still watching, you must be enjoying it, otherwise you'd have gone away by now. I think that's fair logic. <laughs> that's what I'm going to stick with. Okay, there we go. Right, so I suppose we might as well make a floor. You won't see the floor, but we'll just make it so that we know where it where it should be. Even though obviously the door, there's a step, so it's very dangerous. This prison isn't health and safety conscious at all, um, but kind of we're going to be aiming for an angle that doesn't show the floor, so something like that anyway. <sighs> okay, so this is where we're at. We've built. 
the start of it. We've built well, we've built the scene. That's it. Um, we now just need to texture and light it. Okay, so where are we going to begin? Let's start with. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, I just need some tea. Which has gone cold. Let's start with um, our sky. Now I just googled um, sky HDR HDRI and I found this uh, by Mike Robinson. Uh, I'm just going to use that for now. Obviously, use ones that, that uh, aren't copywritten or anything like that. But just drag that in there, make a new texture with it. Don't worry about that. Just press no, and put that onto your sky. Bang! There's your blueness. Isn't that lovely? Um, I forgot. I haven't been labeling all of this, so we're going to call this grass. We're going to call this one. Uh, let's just make a camera so that now we can move our viewport around and not see. So we're going to say this one is the roof, uh, side wall, side, yeah, side. These don't really feature. They're only there just to. The float is there to uh, stop the light coming in from underneath the float. So go back to our camera. There we go. Yeah, right. We've done that one. So um, now the next bit you can do is you even make up all the textures yourself. That sounded funny. Make up all the textures yourself, or you can do what I did and cheat and use the uh, Cinemas content browser. Now, uh, under Visualize, if you have this version, you have materials here. So I'm just going to use these for now. Um, short of that, you can just make up your own. So for the ground, the grass, bang, job's done. Add that into the scene, and we can put that on our grass, and there we have grass. I'm thinking that. Might need to be moved up a little bit. Maybe made something like that. There we go. Cool. So we have our grass. Um, for pretty much everything else, uh, oh, with the exception of plastic, this nice blue, how handy, because that's the exact one for the, uh, the Facebook thing. Uh, other than that, under metal, um, there is this lovely steel rust. So we'll have that. And then we will use that on the floor, the side, the side, the roof, the uh, bars, the main wall, and the door. Okay, and then we will add the blue to the F, the cylinder, and the viewer. Cylinder, let's call that handle. There we go. Uh, oh, we need, we need to texture the glass. There's two ways you can do this. One way is uh, just make it reflective. The other way is put a camera there and then assign a texture with under color, texture, MoGraph, camera shader, and then uh, make the camera that camera shader. And then that will reflect whatever is out there here. But there's not enough light in here to really see it, so it doesn't really matter. So I'm just going to use reflectance. This is in C, uh, R16. I'm just going to go add reflection legacy, and that's it done. If you're using, obviously, the older versions, then uh, just add reflection and press OK, and that's it, done. So in our glass, there we go, that's now reflective. We need something for our guy. Um, personally, I think because he's made of wood, it would be fitting to uh, use a wood texture. So something like this bamboo will be fine. Bang. OK, so that's the scene textured. So we could sit here and watch this render out just to make sure everything is sitting in the correct places. But um, one of the things you'll notice, because of the fact that we added these nice edges, we get these nice little highlights on the corners of everything. And that's looking all fine and lovely. Yes, yes. Great. OK, so now the lighting is obviously as bland as, as ever. So we need to fix that. So next, on to the lighting. Um, I'm going to go into the render settings here. And I'm going to set it to uh, the physical renderer um, and change it to progressive. This is just so that when we do our sort of previews, it only takes a moment and then we get some sort of idea of how it's looking. So at the moment, like I say, it's looking all flat and not lit very well and horrible. So uh, what we want to do is create a light sunlight. OK, now this is where it gets a bit tricky if we select out of the camera because we want to keep that camera where it is. 
and try and find where we are. Oh, there we are. Okay. That's actually a long way away. Um, funny. Right, so our sun is currently not in the right position. Uh, let's go into sun settings here and we'll set untick this, set light color, so that way we can choose it. Um, and also I'm going to put it into a null, so press Alt G. And then this null we can move nice and easily. Uh, but because of the rotation stuff being a bit strange, we'll just zero those out. There we go. And then this will help us move it. So at the moment, we can kind of see that the sun is positioned there and it's pointing there. That we don't want. So we hit rotate and we just turn it. There we go. Now I'm thinking that I want it to be coming in at those windows. Or at that window, you see. So I'm going to position the bottom about there and then maybe just rotate it down just a touch. Now when we come back into our camera, hopefully we shall see that we get this nice kind of, that's clearly where the sun is coming from. Um, it's not quite in the right place yet. So we just uh, angle it that way just a little bit and maybe lower it. Try that. I want to get, there we go. See, I want this nice line coming across here and the bar reflection and all of that. So that's fine. So for the sun settings, we just go into there, go to general color, maybe make it slightly warmer um, and put the intensity up a bit. I want that to really sort of shine through as if it's a really nice bright day. Okay, that's great. Cool. Um, next, obviously, we have some slight issues. The grass is not being lit properly, um, which we want it to be. So for that, we can use global illumination. So if we go effect and turn on global illumination, uh, let's just put it on exterior preview for now. And let's just have a look at that. This will take a minute. Okay, so now you can see that outside we've got some nice color going on. The, the grass is correct, the sky is blue, and that's all fine. Inside is a bit dark. So this is kind of one of those things. Now, in theory, there would be a light, possibly, up here somewhere. Um, but this is where you have to kind of make the decision as to whether you want to go for 100% realism or, you know, uh, nice looks niceness so let's do a compromise we'll create a new light uh, and we'll make it an area light with an area shadow and we'll rotate it so it's facing downwards and let's put that up above him something like that let's just come out of that camera there a minute press s to go to the light zoom in spin round okay there we go so we'll come up just a bit higher. See what this will do is it will add some nice highlights on the back wall as well, making the back wall not seem quite so consistent. Um, so that's our ceiling light. And we need to go into that and perhaps drop, drop the power of that down quite a bit. Maybe make it sort of about 50. Uh, let's just turn off global illumination for while we're testing this. Uh, hop back into our camera and just see what that's doing. So there we go. That's made in here look a little bit, little bit brighter. Um, and I think I'm going to add another one. So copy paste. Uh, let's not move that camera. And I'm going to move this down here and just turn that so it's facing him. Maybe drop this one down to about 30, 40, there we go. Just so it picks up a few highlights on him and shows what he's looking at and all of that. Cool. Okay, no, that's, so that's looking pretty good. All right, so finally, the last little bit is our output. So if we go into our render settings, we can turn on our global illumination 
Um, maybe make this um, exterior. These are what the presets for the for the global illumination. We can just choose a slightly higher res, higher quality one, uh, which is fine. Uh, ambient occlusion as it is is fine. Physical renderer. I'm going to turn on depth of field. Leave it on progressive. Uh, for my output, I'm thinking that I want it. Um, obviously, it's a portrait image. So I'm going to do it as if it was, let's say, a five. But um, that's, let's go to pixels. So we're not doing it for print, so we're only doing it for screen. So we make it 72. Um, and then that gives us that. Now that's obviously, that's a bit, uh, that's a bit big. So what we want to do is maybe half this. So let's just... Uh, Let's just round those off so it makes it a bit easier. So 17, I'm going to cheat, look. Check me out, look, this is me cheating. So 17, 4, 8. My maths is terrible, so this is so much quicker and easier. So uh, 8, 7, 4. Okay, and then the other one. Uh, 2, 4, 8. You're all probably screaming it. You're, oh, I already know it because I'm great at maths and you're terrible. But that's fine. <laughs> right, so 1240. Okay, 1240, there we go. Now, one thing you'll notice, oh no, we can see the whole room. We don't want that. So we need to go into our camera and just change the, the, the lens to something like 80 mil for portrait, bang. And maybe zoom out just a little bit. We've got to watch that wall. Uh, let's see, I want to come down here a little bit, something like this. Um, one quick tip here, there's probably a better way, this is how I do it, but you can just really quickly see those lines. When you switch between these, you can kind of see those lines. So you can, if you haven't got anything in the scene, you can see them really easily. So if we just turn everything off for a second, you see these lines here, that's basically what's going to be rendered. So I tend to sort of do that, and that way I know. Oops, didn't mean to press that button. Uh, gotta go back to this one, turn everything back on. There we go. That way I know that is what's going to be rendered out. So that I'm quite happy with. Cool. Right. Final, final, last little bit. Uh, camera, physical. Let's make the uh, f-stop about 1.4 so we get a little bit of depth of field in there just to make this wall kind of go off to a little bit of a blur and we'll make the f the focus object. There we go. Um, and that is about it. Okay, it did take longer than I thought, to be fair. This isn't quite as super quick as I thought, but we've had some fun, we've done some cool stuff. Um, and this is, our, this is our final scene. So if we click render, this is gonna take a little while. So just to save you uh, the effort of having to sit and watch this, um, I will speed it up for you. But just before I do, don't forget, hop onto my website. You can see there's a ton of tutorials in there that I've done before, all sorts of weird and wonderful stuff. Um, and if, uh, you know, the, the, there's lots of silly things in there. So watch all of them. Uh, feel free to have a look at the shop. I've got various different things. Uh, Infidio, which is my lighting studi studio, uh, is available in the shop. Um, and I'm quite proud of the way this shop works. It's like a pretty nifty uh, kind of thing where it draws everything and you've got a bit of kind of weird wobbly mouse stuff. None of this has got anything to do with anything, but it's just a bit of fun. Um, so in Video Pro, there's a lot of information on it there and stuff like that. So anyway, that's that. Um, yeah. Also, yeah, I've got like Facebook and I've got Twitter and Google Plus and all of that sort of stuff. So feel free to go and hop on there, you know. And if you if you see a picture that um, you th you're, you know a piece of art or something like that that you think might uh, be makeable in cinema, then send it and I'll have a look. And if it's something that I think would be good to do, then maybe I'll do it. Anyway, so we'll let this uh, do its thing, and I'll speed this up at the end here, um, just so that you can see it finish off. And yeah. Good luck and have fun. Catch you later.
Okay, so this has been running now for uh, a good 10 minutes or so. So, um, I thought I would actually just come back and uh, just do one last little piece, which is if uh, what to actually do with this now, because obviously using the physical renderer in progressive mode, at what point do you do something and what is it that you do? Because obviously this will just keep rendering forever, just improving ever so slightly. I mean, there's, there's, there's got to be a point where it can't improve anymore. But I thought, well, <clears throat> excuse me, you may, in case you're not familiar with it, yeah, uh, I'll just quickly show you what to do. So the way I often do it is, it, you know, if I'm working on a still and I want it to be really, really nice, um, then I will let that, I will literally, I'll let that run for a couple of hours um, and just let it do its thing. Um, sometimes if I want to just sort of get on, what you can actually do is you can right click over here and do save as. Um, and then depending on how high a quality, if you're really, really looking at high quality, save it out as something like a TIFF PSD layers. Uh, maybe put the channels up a bit so that you can get a bit more in de uh, information in the whites. But um, just for, for what we're doing now, I'm just going to do JPEG, 8 bits per channel. Job's done. 72 DPI. Absolutely fine. So OK to that. Then it'll ask you where to save it. Now, I, this is my test one I did from earlier. So I'll just call this uh, number two and save. And then if you then load up Photoshop, and just drag that into it. You can kind of start tweaking, and uh, uh, you know. And then what you can do is always swap out the background, unless you make any actual destructive changes. Um, then you just swap out the background. But like, uh, so this this is not not looking too bad. Um, if we go in here, maybe add a curves adjustment. Um, just get that lighting up, but then darken it down a bit, a little bit in here, and there we go. Just push that. Just so a pretty pretty typical S curve. Um, maybe we could add a new layer, paint some uh, black around the edges, uh, something like this, um, and then maybe choose a mode. I don't know something like not lighter color, uh, just darker color, darker color. And then just pull the opacity back on that just to draw that in a little bit. Um, sometimes, not every time, but sometimes I quite like make make a duplicate of the image and go to uh, filter blur tilt shift um, and then rotate this round like this and make it so it's about there pull that in so it's just at the side there something like that turn the actual blur down a little bit so it's just just subtle just enough just to add a little bit something to it there we go so then when you look at the difference that was it before and that's it tweaked um, you might want to you know, do some things where you warm it up or darken it down or do whatever you want. But that's kind of, that, I'm quite happy with that. I think that looks all right. If we compare that with the the original. Um, he's obviously, is a lot lighter in here. He has, he, uh, I didn't spot this earlier, but yeah, there's a shadow here. So he has obviously got quite a bright light in there. But I think, uh, we, yeah, we've, we've, we've done it justice, I think, here. Um, but what you can do, like I say, is uh, obviously this is still going. This, so this is just getting better and better. Um, so you know we could save that again later with a different file name and then just pull it in and just drag it underneath and maybe rerun the tilt shift on it or something ah but there you go so anyway that is now officially it that's the end of the tutorial so catch you next time have fun ciao for now